previously on Spinelli Speaks. Now today's book was another landslide vote for Sarah Green's Water for Elephants. Hi everyone, Danny here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a review of a book that I am very surprised that everyone voted on. We had a few votes for our other selection, but I am very pleased that everyone wanted to hear more about Kristen Lavenstatter. Yay! So if you are new here, I have been doing 31 days of book reviews in the month of July for my birthday month. So every day in the month of July, the 1st through the 31st, I will be doing um, reviews of books that I have recently read. And at the end of each video, so make sure you stay tuned, there is an opportunity for you to vote on tomorrow's review. So I'm keeping this as interactive as I can because I love that piece of the whole puzzle. So Today, everyone selected uh, Kristen Lavenstatter, um, which is part one of a three-part um, book series. So it's a trilogy, um, and it's a Norwegian classic. Um, and this one is The Wreath. Now, there are two other books in the trilogy. The next is called The Wife, and then the last in the trilogy is called The Cross, um, all with the uh, Kristen Lavenstatter, and then part one, part two, and part three. Now this book, I will tell you going in, your first and immediate impression is, wow, there is a lot of verbiage here that I don't quite understand. Now depending on your um, edition, you may have more notes or less notes. Now all of my notes in my edition, which is a Penguin Classic edition, I did have some notes in the back of my edition that I could cross-reference while I was reading. However, I will tell you that for me is the hardest way to read a book is when the notes are in the back of the book. Because I feel like as I'm reading, I am getting like, disor like disoriented while I'm reading the book. I much rather prefer the notes to be footnotes so that instead of having to pause my reading and flip to the back, I can just glance down and see the note on the bottom of the page. So if you are someone who needs notes and who relies on those annotations, I highly recommend that when you select your copy of a classic that you look to see where the notes are located. Now, for me, this was a very new to me kind of book. I can't really recall many books from Norway that I've read in the past. This may be the first one I've ever read. Um, and it's really good. I really enjoyed it. It's a little bit getting into trying to kind of settle yourself and find out your rhythm in reading this book. But once the action starts, it really doesn't end. This book is quite like a soap opera. I think that's the best way to put it. So what is this about? It's about Kristen Lavernstatter, and she is a daughter of a landowner who is well regarded in his area, and she is betrothed to someone in the area, and it's set in like the 1400s, so it's medieval. Uh, this is a medieval piece, and she is very pretty, and lots of men want to be with her, and she's like 16, 17. And something happens to her in which the whole town kind of thinks she's kind of a little bit of a, I don't know the right word to say here, but a little bit of a, um, what word do I want to use here? Because I know a word I want to use, but I don't want to say it on my channel. <laughs> but let's just say they think she's a little loose. <laughs> She's not, by the way, but because of this 
something that happens they just obviously assume that it's the woman's fault and her betrothed believes her of course because he's amazing and he says well why don't we send her away to a cloister or a nunnery where she can learn the ways of being a wife and everyone can forget about this thing that happened and then when she comes back we'll get married and it'll be wonderful and the soap opera ensues <laughs> at the cloister or nunnery where she's supposed to be learning all these virtuous things and being closer to God as a Christian um she meets this man who is like a total like he's like gotten some lady to love him before he has sired two children from her and now like he's been banished but he's trying to get back and he totally seduces her spoiler alert i don't know if that's a spoiler it's really about what the whole book is about and she totally falls for it all of it and it's so interesting and by the end of the book you're just like what because at the end it's like it's really a beginning because it is a trilogy so you're gonna get into this next piece of the of the trilogy but it's so interesting to see how easily she is kind of seduced and she is a young she is young but it also like you kind of all of her convictions you would have imagined her being like tougher to to crack and she was like i hate to say the word easy <laughs> But it, I mean, she kind of fell for it pretty easily. Um, so we have her and this Erland, uh, who is the seducer. And at first you really like him. And then all of a sudden, like, towards the middle of his seduction, you're kind of like, ew. Ew. I mean, you're 10 years older than her. And ew. Anywho, it's like a soap opera, a Norwegian soap opera. It's super awesome. Like, and at first when you're reading it, you're kind of still getting your footing. But once all these little things start happening, you're really like wanting to keep reading because it's like, are you serious? Is this really happening? And then you have to remember, like, this is medieval. This is like in the 1400s. So there's a lot about like journeys. So you get to see landscapes. You get to see, you know, different um, ways of life traditions, um, ways that certain, um, like, ceremonies uh, take place, different um, holidays, that kind of thing. Uh, the beginning of the book is really interesting because we see a little bit of paganism and how that conversion has kind of affected this particular um, village. Uh, you see like how uh, like rain, water, that kind of stuff kind of influences the village. It's it's really interesting. It's, it's really interesting. And then in the heart of it is this love story um, or lust story, as I'd like to say. But excellent, excellent book for a classic. You know, it's so interesting to see these themes that we see so often in contemporary literature that it's just really hilarious to see. And I know that this book was not written in medieval times. Let me um, take a look here if it will have. Um, so the, the author um, was born in 1882 and died in 1949. Um, so the book itself, it looks like um, was written in the 20s, so 1920s. So it wasn't like written in medieval times, but it was a modernist author. Modernism is um, right after the First World War, the Great War, um, as it was called at that time, um, and wrote about medieval times, which is super interesting. So I, I'm really blown away by this. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And I'm really excited to um, embark on the next part, which is called The Wife. I really just anticipate like mm, craziness happening. I'm so excited. Um, and I forgot to mention, I buddy read this with a great subscriber, Jeanette. Um, you may have seen her in the comments. She is there all the time. Thank you so much, Jeanette. 
as well as Rainy from Rainy Day Reads. And we really enjoyed the book as far as like, it's just so dramatic and not expected. We did not expect that from this book. And we are going right into the second book now and um, are excited to kind of find out what happens next. So I thoroughly enjoyed this one. I hope you can find it yourself. I happened to find this at a thrift store. Um, I got each one for 99 cents. So I got um, all three for under three dollars technically. So I'm pretty excited about that. So it just kind of fell into my lap so to speak. Um, but I know that my friend who I'm buddy reading with um, do have it on the audio version, which may be helpful with certain words that um, just don't quite look right to us. So um, excellent, excellent. I can't wait to see the next one. Now for tomorrow's review, I have an interesting um, couple of selections here for you to pick from. Um, and the first being actually two books that I'll do in one review because they are children's books. Um, so that is uh, the first, which is the Little People Big Dream series of Jane Austen. So this is a children's book and I would be happy to review that uh, as well and along with another children's book which is called Ordinary Extraordinary Jane Austen. Um, so these two books I will put into one review as they are children's books and obviously very um, small but I thought since it's Jane Austen July and everyone's looking for some great reads I picked these up because I just wanted something a little bit different and I wanted to see what is available for me you know someday down the road when I start to read to little ones, I'd love to read them something that I feel matters. Um, and authors matter to me. So I want to instill that in my own children. And I thought, well, why don't I just go and see what they have for Jane Austen? So I was pleasantly surprised. There's a lot to pick from. So I selected these two. So let me know if you'd like me to re, uh, excuse me, review these two tomorrow as well as your second selection will be a couple, a bundle essentially. I'm going to put a picture here because I've already returned them to the library, but I feel like I uh, read the first five uh, volumes in the Paper Girls uh, graphic novel series. So if you would like me to review those uh, graphic novels, um, like I said, I think I read uh, volumes one through five. Um, there's still more to come, but I read volumes one through five, and that's what I'll kind of talk about in the review should you select those. So you can either do the Jane Austen um, children's books, and I'll do both, and then one through five of Paper Girls for tomorrow. So let me know in the comments which you'd like me to review, and I would be happy to tell you all about it. So until next time, I hope you are reading something great, taking care, and staying safe. And as always, you know how it goes. Happy reading. Bye!